Biobalance HealthCast, episode 129, Fibromyalgia. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, medical director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So this week we are continuing our conversation about five sneaky things that your doctors may not ask you about but that you should know about in terms of your general health status. And we ended our conversation last time talking about some types of autoimmune disorders and we're going to continue this morning with another discussion about an autoimmune disorder that more and more people are suffering from typically begin to, to have complaints about it around age 38. Uh, and it's called fibromyalgia, and it's correlated to a disease that's not an autoimmune disorder uh, called chronic fatigue. And so we're going to talk about both of those today. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're confused with one another. I mean, they're, they're mm -hmm. t from totally two separate, uh, we call them etiologies, meaning the cause. The causes of these two illnesses are different, but they've been confused over time because the first symptom is, I'm so tired, you know, but it's not just normal tired. I saw that movie. Yeah, you probably heard that story before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired. And, and, and people who have either of these illnesses mm -hmm. are tired. That's their first thing. But then all of a sudden after that, all of the symptoms separate. So people who have fibromyalgia say, I'm tired and I ache all over. And, and sometimes fibromyalgia or sometimes chronic fatigue has aching. But aching for fibromyalgia is tender points all over their muscles. It's not joints. See, joints are like here or in your fingers, knees, hips. But they have like tender points like in the middle of their thigh or in their calf or in their arm. And they're like, and it's here and it's here and, and it's it here. Around. And it moves around. Okay. And, and that is fibromyalgia. And, and that's one of those things where your doctor's not going to go, hey, do you hurt all over? Do your muscles ache? You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes... That also can be confused for a side effect for the cholesterol drugs. How debilitating is fibromyalgia? It's very debilitating. It's, it's like other severe autoimmune disorders. It basically is, a t you are attacking your own muscles. Mm -hmm. So it's attacking the muscles, it's inflaming them, it's giving you chronic pain. You're never without pain. You go to bed with pain, you wake up with pain, and nothing ever really works. Now yeah. you can be given uh, um, anti-inflammatories that sometimes works a little but usually not a lot steroids other um, immune suppressants mm -hmm. but then you get sick in other ways mm -hmm. if you suppress your immune system so that you don't have pain then you often times will get some viral bacterial infection the last thing is antidepressants which you know a lot about I was just gonna say yeah that kind of pain, chronic pain, is treated with antidepressants. So oftentimes that's what is thrown at fibromyalgia to see if it sticks. Yeah. And sadly, that's not really what treats it. It's not going to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. And so as long you don't want a lifetime of this. If you start at 40 well, people and you live to 80, pain, it's horrible. Uh, fre frequently become depressed. I, mean, I would the, be depressed if I hurt every day. Debilitating pain, and, and it's really hard on them in, in a lot of ways. The physiology of being in pain all the time affects the way you move, how much you can relax, what you can do, how long you can do it, your endurance, all of those things. But it also affects your relationships because people get tired of you and they don't they, they yeah. don't want to be patient with you. They don't want to walk slowly with you. They, yeah. You don't even know you're doing it. You don't even know you're doing it. You're just like, oh, it hurts, it hurts. You and you become isolated. And it's so sad. It just, it's, it's not your a fault circular, either. circular a domino, you know, that just keeps collapsing Mm -hmm. And if it goes back to something like fibromyalgia, which is an autoimmune disorder, then you look for treatments for that. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the whole part of the process to, is to go back up the, the food chain <laughs> to find the point where you can intervene, intervene for maximum results. Right. Giving you an antidepressant is not going to be it's far enough very back up bottom. the food chain. Yes. It's the very bottom. So you want to find out what caused it yes. and treat what caused it instead of find out all the symptoms and give you a medicine for all the things I I'm visual so I just like you are and so I'm I like see this pattern mm -hmm. yeah. of all the different steps and I want to go back to that first thing like that computer program about mind mapping where you just see all these things clustered around that's my favorite you know, program data points yeah <laughs> software uh, 
<laughs> but but for those who are visual, you see that and immediately get the information that you need. And yeah. I don't want to use these at the bottom. I want to go and treat the yeah. the initial problem. And we talked about how this this intersects with testosterone. Mm -hmm. I have many fibromyalgia patients. They have other symptoms of testosterone loss, but their primary issue is I got I. I don't know exactly when this started, but I have had pain ongoing mm -hmm. for blank years and nobody has been able to fix it mm -hmm. totally. Then I look at their levels and they usually have had their ovaries out, no testosterone at all, or they have low testosterone. And so when I replace it, all these other symptoms of testosterone loss go away, but fibromyalgia goes away too. And so, th and I have a really good success rate with fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. It's Amazing. And it doesn't matter how long they've suffered from it? No, it doesn't. Okay. I so mean, if you've had it for 10 years. What hurts is the inflammation. And you can grow that muscle back if right. you've damaged it mm -hmm. or you haven't exercised because you hurt when mm -hmm. you exercise. Mm -hmm. Then you can you can get that hurt muscle when you back. hurt when you don't. Right. And you're sitting on the couch watching TV and you're in pain. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's just not fun to live with that or live mm -hmm. with somebody who has it. Mm -hmm. So really, your doctor's not going to go looking for this. Because it's, his training says you've got to go down to all these medicines for all these different symptoms. And it's hard, it's hard to treat if you treat it from that standpoint. But it's easy to treat if you treat it from treat the problem. Treat yeah. the first thing that happened, which is the autoimmune change because your testosterone dropped. Then we treat that. But chronic fatigue. Right. Chronic fatigue is different. And it is very hard for testosterone to treat this. This is not one of my slam dunks. Right. It is not one of my, oh, this is going to be great because we gave you testosterone like fibromyalgia. Chronic fatigue is actually a viral or a bacterial infection that won't go away. Mm -hmm. So when we get, when we get uh, infections, we, something comes into our body, our body s develops an immune response, our T cells and all of our blood cells go and attack that virus or bacteria, and we say it goes away right. because we have an immune system that works. Mm -hmm. If our immune system is decreased by stress, by cancer medications, by steroids because we have asthma, mm -hmm. by a lot of other things, but stress is usually the biggie, then all of the activity of our immune system decreases, and it lets in a virus or a bacteria, and it goes to town. It creates like the um, virus for mono is Epstein-Barr virus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can get a recurrence of that when our immune system drops. If we're exposed to it at all, it, it regenerates an infection and it goes crazy. And we, if our immune system isn't working, we can't get rid of it. And you know how mono made you feel? I mean, it was like you were so tired. I had it in med, first year of med school and I'm like, yeah. oh, bad timing you know if you're if you had a lot of yeah. sisters and brothers I remember when I was in you high usually school, kids get would it get early mono, they would be at home in bed for at least a month they right. couldn't come to school right well I went to school but you feel like you're in jello yeah mono makes you feel like I've got to get through this jello to to do what I'm supposed to be doing well imagine that never going away people women are m mostly attacked by this more than men it's mononucleosis mononucleosis but the virus is epstein barr mm -hmm. and epstein barr there's a test so when someone comes to me and says gives me the symptoms of chronic fatigue where they're so tired and they feel sick all the time and they feel they have chills and they i mean basically but, but they're not in pain it's a distinction not, between fibromyalgia they, and they they can be in just aching pain but uh -huh. it's kind of like they can't point to it. They can't okay. say it's here, it's here, it's, it's here. Overall. It's just yeah. overall, I hurt all over, mm -hmm. but they can't point. So I ask them that. Yeah. They may have headaches. They may have, they may grind their teeth because they're miserable. They may, you know, there's so many other things. It's hard to tell. Did that come first? Or is that because you've right. been in so much pain for so long or not, and in so much fatigue for so long trying to do your job? Mm -hmm. So I look for the Epstein-Barr virus. And I look for CMV virus, because that's another virus that can cause this. There's several others. Mm -hmm. And I look at a panel for that, not because I think that I'm an, uh, <laughs> that I'm a uh, specialist in immune deficiency, because I'm not, right. and not because I think that uh, testosterone won't help, because testosterone does help your immune system. But I want to know why. 
Yeah. I'd like I'd like to have a reason. So when you say you look at a panel, you're talking about a blood test. A blood test. That you send them to a lab, they have blood tests drawn, and mm -hmm. then the lab runs certain subtests mm -hmm. on the blood sample, which right. is called a panel. That panel, list I'm sorry. Of, yes. of subtests. Yes, thanks for so, the translation. So you ask for those subtests that will identify the, the virus that would tell you it's chronic fatigue. Right. Okay. That's right. Sometimes I'll do the, um, look at the, look at the counts of the uh, white cells mm -hmm. and the T killer cells and mm -hmm. things like that to see. But the reason I, the reason I do that is because sometimes mono responds to something called valcite, which is an antiviral that they give to pe people with AIDS. Okay. Okay. So you don't have AIDS, but you have chronic fatigue. Valcite sometimes works, but it has to be given by um, an infectious disease doctor. They they specialize that it's an IV medicine or or it's a they start IV then they go to pills, but it has to be monitored carefully to kill that virus. And sometimes that works. There's a doctor at um, let's see University of San Francisco, California at their medical school that, that actually specializes in this. And um, he's written a couple books. I'm, his name's just right out of my mind, sorry. sorry. But um, he's written uh, From Fatigue to Fantastic, that's the name of the book. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of, of insight and remedies for this illness, but it's not one, even though I give testosterone for it and people feel 25% better or 30% better, mm -hmm. They're, they don't generally feel 100%, and sadly, I mean, it's, it's not the but it, answer to But it's to a viral everything. infection. It's not like a lifestyle issue of, no. uh, of not exercising. It's or, one that won't go away, yeah. you know? It's, and it's kind of like we have, if our immune system's down, we get shingles. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask you about shingles. Because, because shingles like... is a virus that we have had since we had chicken pox when we were kids. It's dormant in the body. Right, it's you, dormant. It, it comes in the body when you have chicken pox and then it just lies there. In the nerves, and... in the nerves somewhere in your body. Uh -huh. And it always shows up back at that nerve area. Like it'll be in your sp around your spine. Mm -hmm. When your immune system goes, goes kaput for some reason, like mine, even though I take testosterone, even though I try to live a really healthy life when... My father died six months after that. My hair fell out. I got sick. I had, I mean, it was from the stress it of, all from the stress yeah. of so just your his loss defines. and all of the things you have to do right. after a parent dies. Sure. And I'm the only child. So that was a huge drop in my immune system. And I didn't mm -hmm. really think about it at the time. You don't. I just kept thinking, what's wrong? What's yeah. wrong? Until what's wrong? Until you're in molasses and you're not able to move and you're like, why don't I have any energy? Why can't I do this? I'm just so thankful I didn't get mono or shingles or something else. Yeah. You know, kept drinking my carrot juice and all those but things. But when you have an outbreak of shingles, that's very painful. That Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. And it always, in general, it's in the same place every time. Now, it's, there are shots that you can get for that. And, and all of you who have had, I mean, all of you should mm -hmm. get the shot for shingles. Mm -hmm. um, anybody who's over 40... I mean, in general, we've all had chicken pox. Yeah. The next generation may not need this because they've been immun immunized for chicken pox, but mm -hmm. we've all had it. So babies who are born today are immunized, but we weren't. And we've had, we've had the disease, so it doesn't help. Anyway, so, the, I mean, it kind of comes around your abdomen or it comes around your behind or one, you know, down your leg in a certain pattern called dermatomes. And that's where the one nerve comes down and it's very specific. You could draw a line around it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for that, there's really no treatment. We don't have a treatment for it after it happens unless you're immune compromised. They give um, v VZIG, which is an immune globulin, but that's in severe cases. But for shingles, they usually just manage the pain. Mm -hmm. And there are something, there's something called lidoderm, lidoderm patch. So it comes in a patch about that big. It's white. On one side, it has lidocaine on it. And you can only wear it 12 hours. So you have to pick your 12 hours. Do you want to wear it during the day or at night? You want to sleep at night? You want to sleep or do you yeah. want to work, you right. know? Mm -hmm. but, but what they do is they take the patch and you put it over, like if your shingles was down the side of your leg. Mm -hmm. You put that patch over it and <sighs> instant relief. 
because we would have this sometimes in pregnancy. People would get their get shingles. We couldn't use any drugs. Okay. So, so I have a friend who has a tens unit implanted in his back. Yes. Uh, transcutaneous nerve stimulator. And that's for pain. And it's for pain, and he's uh, in his forties. Uh, but if he were to develop shingles, would the tens unit? work to inhibit the not actually the, the interesting thing about the tens units is they don't stop the pain they stop the transmission of the pain they signal they can the area it. that hurts still hurts i have a tens unit i've used it before for muscle spasms uh -huh. and you know if you have a muscle spasm i had to know every single way to cure a problem without a drug when right, i was right. when i was delivering babies because you sure. can't take anything that alters your mm -hmm. your um ability to think when you're an ob i mean God, God love the OBs that are still doing You don't that. want your OB to be on, high on drugs when they're well, delivering the baby. Well, or taking taking any kind of drug that would alter their ability to make a snap decision. Yeah. It's very it's very important. So I could never do that stuff. So I'd have have to have everything I could do to to yeah. stop anything like a muscle spasm. You'd normally take, you know, muscle relaxant and go to sleep. Well, I couldn't do that. I so I to, use a tens unit, and it works great. I used to teach psychology in high school, and and when we were talking about the way the body responds and the mind, and and how it all is connected, I had a salesman for a drug company come in with a tens unit and put it on kids' arms, and then make their hands open and close, <laughs> reflexively. You know, that they yeah, you can control you can it. make that happen. Yeah, well, they they do that sometimes, like if your knees immobilized, and they don't want these muscles to atrophy. Right. Then they can exercise them without moving the leg. Well, there's there's some people who have. We're off. We're off course here, but <laughs> Sorry. some people who have um, who are paralyzed, they yeah. get nerve stimulations. If in case they're mm -hmm. if they're suspected to come back and they need right. those muscles, sometimes they use tens units to stimulate the muscle right. so that it doesn't die. Yes, because it will. It'll atrophy, yeah. and then you can't get it back. But back to chronic fatigue versus fibromyalgia, those are things sometimes doctors get on the wrong track because. They aren't really looking for that. They ask you the questions for what they're looking for. Right. And it, honestly, <laughs> HMOs have changed things so that they go from a 20 minute appointment in the last 10 years, 20 down minutes, 10 years down to six minutes. Yeah. In six minutes, I can't say hello. Yeah, the average Which is doctor why I do what patient, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I have to say, the average doctor patient minutes. visit in the United States now is six minutes. And, 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 and so what they do is that's they, not what they, teach they try us. to identify and respond to symptoms. In, in a triage, in a checklist of most egregious or most violating symptom that's causing you the most pain, and then come back next week and we'll look at the next one, and the next week and we'll look at the next one. Rather than spend 30 minutes now, figure out how far back up the food chain you can go and treat Part that. Part of it is they paid so, the insurance companies and Medicare pay so little for an office visit that mm -hmm. they can, uh, they give you the time basically they're paid for, and as the time and the, and the fees have gone down instead of up. So as your time goes like this, I could never do that. That's why I got out. Well, <laughs> That's one of the reasons I got out. I could never joke about not the position that says, "Have you ever had this before?" It. Well, you've got it again. That'll be a hundred dollars. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not because, funny. <laughs> because that's not exactly how that works. <laughs> but but your physician should be able to know something about you, have everything in your chart, and be able to kind of put all this together. Yeah. But to put all this together in six minutes, that's what's a, 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 I was just behind the car that said, I love Obamacare. Yeah. And I said, they don't know what Obamacare is. Yeah. Because Obamacare, I know. I mean, I know. We're on different sides of the aisle here. But oh, in medicine, Obamacare hasn't happened. It's like having a team where you've had a great coach that brought in lots of great people into a team, but you leave, okay? And then the next coach that comes in doesn't know anything, right. but he wins for a while until these guys graduate, and then he starts losing right. because he got the team from the other coach. So it'll be okay for a while, and then all of a sudden, Six-minute visits. Anyway, so this is why your doctor doesn't get to all this stuff. And honest to God, I'm not, I love my doctor friends, and I feel so sorry for them. Oh, yeah, the pressure that they're under to do what they need to do and train themselves to do, but do it in a way that's economically affordable for them and their patients. But I, I'm so blessed to be able to horrific. sit down with somebody yes, and are. go over things for 45 minutes to an hour. I just love that because then I get all their information down. I kind of understand how they work. Mm -hmm. And then we can discuss things and find out stuff like this. And that's what every doctor should be able to do. That's why we went to all that school. Well, and you, you've essentially invented a new way to practice medicine mm -hmm. that allows you to go around those roadblocks 
that... I'm trying to prevent disease. Yeah. I don't want people to be sick. I don't want anyone to have to suffer and have a terrible, a terrible, terrible day because they're in pain and they can't, mm -hmm. they can't even go to work. They can't even have a normal relationship. So my goal is to address these things this way so that you don't have to spend quite as much time. But when you do go to your doctor, figure out the few things you want to know. You have to have the answers to those. And not a, not a list that rolls out across the floor, but like on a, on a three by five card, yeah. three Four questions. Four or five questions, yeah. Three questions. Three. My, my de <laughs> the head of my department, Nobi, used to say, you got five minutes and three points to make and then I'm not listening. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> yeah. that's what he said to me as a resident and, and I learned that. It's a good thing to learn when you're going in to see a doctor. So. Not to me, though. You can bring all those questions to me. <laughs> so if you have chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia, I guess the, the summary of what we're trying to make available to you today is that fibromyalgia is treatable and responds to the replacement of testosterone in, in most cases, and that chronic fatigue is a virus and needs other kinds of treatment. But they responds both require, a little. It responds usually a, makes little, people a little, 25, 30 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, but both of these disorders require that you spend a little time with your physician parsing out exactly what it is you're suffering from so you get the optimal positive intervention. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.